Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. About six months ago here on this channel, I posted a video comparison of the Spear Gold Dot and Federal Punch 22 Magnum ammunitions out of a short barreled revolver. I got a lot of feedback in the comments section of that video. Uh, got a lot of comments and a lot of views on that video. But one thing that kept coming up over and over was Buffalo. Why didn't you include the Hornady Critical Defense in your test? Well, the answer is, I just didn't have any. At that time, I couldn't find any. So, I've got some now. Let's go make this thing right. Okay, so before we dive in and take a look at this ammunition, I need to let you guys know that today's test revolver is the Smith & Wesson 351C, once again. This is the same revolver I used last time. For those of you that don't know, the 351 c has a 1 and 7 8 inch barrel. It's also a very, very lightweight revolver. It has an aluminum frame and an aluminum cylinder. If you're interested in my review on this revolver, I'll have it linked in the description down below. Starting with the Hornady Critical Defense. Here's a look at the box. You can see it is a 45 grain FTX bullet. Muzzle velocity from a handgun is listed as 1,000 feet per second, and that is tested from a 1 and 7 8 inch barrel. They give us that information there. Here's a look at one of the cartridges. You can see nickel plated case. They use a fast burning powder to get the velocities up in a short barrel. These, all three of these are optimized for use in a short barrel. Nickel plated case makes them easy to see in low light conditions, and they're of course, more corrosion resistant. Got your Hornady head stamp on the case. And the 45 grain jacketed hollow point has a copper jacket. And that little insert in the hollow point is to keep it from clogging up. So these are supposed to expand reliable under pretty much any condition. So I loaded up seven rounds and fired them from the 351C over my chronograph about 10 foot away. And I got an average of about 1,010 feet per second. So we were 10 feet per second faster than the advertised velocity. I had a standard deviation of 27, and at 1,010 feet per second, the energy comes to about 102 foot-pounds. Up next, we have the Spear Gold Dot. Here's a look at the box. Personal protection, short barrel, 40 grain, that says gold dot hollow point short barrel. It's a 40 grain jacketed hollow point. I couldn't find any information on the box as far as velocity levels or energy levels. So I went to the website and they list it as 1,050 feet per second from a two inch barrel. Here's a look at the cartridge. Got some things in common. All three of these have a few things in common. This is a nickel plated case, the low flash powder, and the fast burning powder. They're all optimized for the short barrel. So all that's the same. Of course you got your CCI head stamp. And here's a look at that 40 grain jacket at hollow point. So I loaded seven rounds into my 351C and fired all seven rounds over the chronograph at about 10 feet away and I got an average of about 1,026 feet per second, which is about 24 feet per second slower than advertised. But the advertised velocity is out of a two inch barrel. This is a one and seven eighth inch barrel. I'm not sure how much difference an eighth of an inch would make, but there is that. I had a standard deviation of 30 feet per second and the 1,026 feet per second with a 40 grain bullet comes to 93 foot pounds of energy. And finally, we have the Federal Punch. You can see personal defense, punch, jacketed hollow point, 45 grain. Over here on the side, 1,000 feet per second muzzle velocity, velocity achieved through a two inch barrel. Here's a look at the cartridge itself. Again, we've got a nickel plated case, low flash powder, fast burning powder to get that velocity up in a short barrel. See our federal premium head stamp. And here's our 45 grain jacketed hollow point. It is nickel plated as well. 
So I loaded seven of these up in my 351C and shot them over the chronograph at the same distance as I did the other two. I got an average velocity of about 1,052 feet per second. That's 52 feet per second faster than advertised with a 1 8 inch shorter barrel than advertised. I had a standard deviation of 28 feet per second and 1,052 feet per second with a 45 grain bullet comes to about 111 foot-pounds of energy. So on your screen now, you'll see the numbers that I got today for each of these ammunitions, shooting them out of this specific revolver over my specific chronograph and using these specific lots of ammunition under these specific conditions. <laughs> There's a lot of things that can change these numbers. These are the numbers I'm getting today. That's all I'm trying to say. So on paper, it looks like the Federal Punch is performing the best, but how will that look in a clear ballistics 10% gel block? Let's find out. Here's a look at the block I'll be shooting into. It's a clear ballistics 10% block. You know, people often ask me if clear ballistics gives me these blocks for free, and the answer is no. I've never received a free gel block from clear ballistics or any other manufacturer. I actually get these blocks through contributions made by the folks that support this channel over on Patreon. So if you enjoy these types of videos, you may want to consider joining me over there. The link is always in the description. And of course, you can always support this channel and it doesn't cost you a thing just by hitting that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd appreciate it if you'd go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Hornady FTX. Sorry, I don't have any slow motion footage for you guys today. The only camera that I had that had a halfway decent frame rate is on the Fritz. Uh, hopefully I can get it fixed. If not, I'm gonna have to get something else. But here's our entry. We swing around to the side here. See our wound track. And there sits our bullet. Looks like it stopped about 10 and a half inches in penetrated a little bit beyond 11 inches and bounced back to about 10 and a half inches. I try to get these my camera to line up where the parallax is out but a lot of times I'll tell you guys a measurement and if my camera is at an angle it looks different than what I'm telling you on the video but I'm seeing 10 and a half inches. Very little expansion. A little disappointed in that. Bare gel block uh, that, that'll usually give you good expansion with just about anything that's going to expand. Spear gold dot. There's our entry. Come around to the side. We definitely got less penetration with the gold dot. And the expansion is not very impressive either. It settled in at about eight and three eighths inches. Looks like it penetrated to about nine inches and bounced back a little bit. All right, so federal punch. Let's see what it does. I'm going to try to put it in just above that FTX. Alright, so there's the entry. So that's our punch. This was the FTX. This was the gold dot. Let's take, go around here and see what the punch looks like. By far, the best penetration yet. Look at that. Looks like it settled in at about a foot. Penetrated to about probably 12 and 3 quarter to 13 inches and then bounced back and settled in at a foot. Best looking expansion yet as well. So it expanded the best and got the most penetration. I didn't expect to see that. I thought the one that expanded the most might end up with a little less penetration. 
pretty cool. You probably noticed that I kept all those shots to the left of the block, and I did that for a reason. I wanted to keep this side of the block clean, and I added two layers of denim just to see if those hollow points would expand after penetrating two uh, layers of denim. I am disappointed in the gold dot and the FTX already. Uh, maybe, maybe I just got some weak rounds or something. We'll find out with this denim test. All right, Hornady Critical Defense FTX with two layers of denim on the block. There's our entry, second layer. Here, you can see some denim pulled into that hole a little bit. Let's go over the top this time. We follow that track down. See our bullet there. Again, this time, for well, the first time the nose flared out a little bit. This time, there's no expansion on that. Take a side look at it. It is right here, so about eight and a half inches of penetration, maybe eight and three quarter inches of penetration, and it doesn't look like it bounced back hardly any, so we'll call it eight and three quarter on that one and be done with it. You can see the bullet did spin around, uh, tumbled around backwards there, and ended tail first. Not bad wound tracks on these 22 Magnum bullets. Spear gold dot, two layers of denim on the 10% gel block. Here's the entry just below the Hornady round. See it there? Come over the top and it done quite quite a bit better than it did in the bare block it's right there it did give us some expansion and penetrated deeper than it did in the bare block so if you can see it back there looks like about 10 inches of penetration on that one So with the two layers of denim, the gold dot redeemed itself a little bit there. Let's see how the punch reacts to the denim. Okay, so I put that punch in beneath those other two this time. So this time the punch is on the bottom, last time it was on the top. There's one layer, there's two layers, and here's our entry. Come around to the side. Wow. All right, that looks good. Look at that. That bullet got good expansion and penetration. It came in at about 12 and 3 quarter inches. Looks like it went about 13 and a half inches or so. It bounced back. Look at that. Actually a little farther penetration than it did in the bare gel. Tell you what, I'm going to cut these bullets out and we'll look at them close up. I cut those bullets out of the gel block. What you're looking at here is the two Hornady critical defense bullets that I cut out. The one that I shot in the bare gel block did start to expand. The nose started to open up just a little bit. And the one that went through the denim didn't expand at all. It looks like a new bullet other than those rifling marks on it. We'll measure what little expansion we got here at the nose of that bullet. I'm measuring in inches. 0.267 at the widest point of that bullet. 267 thou on that. So not real happy with the critical defense. It didn't offer anything special 
either in penetration or expansion out of that short barreled revolver. Up next we've got the gold dot. This is the one that I shot in the bare block and this is the one that went through the denim. The one that went through the denim you can see the hollow point peeled back farther than the one in the bare gel even though that the one in the bare gel is going to measure bigger we'll go ahead and measure them it didn't peel back as far the bare gel measures looks like measure try to find the widest point here to give it looks like about 308 and a half thousandths and the one that went through the denim comes in at about 304 and a half or 30, 305 and a half so not much difference in expansion but again if you look at those bullets side by side the one that went through the denim looks shorter because it peeled back farther now for the federal punch these look great these worked as advertised good penetration and good expansion in the bare block and in the denim we'll measure these just for the sake of measuring it and on these this one was the denim and this one was the bare block so the denim one expanded to about 337 and a half you can see that well the bare block expanded expanded to about 318 320 somewhere in that range about 320 but these were the clear winner today guys I never in my videos I don't tell anybody what caliber to carry I don't tell anybody which gun they should be carrying but I don't have any problems telling you what I would carry when I carry my little 22 Magnum and it's not every day that's not my primary carry but when I do carry it you can guarantee it's going to be loaded up with seven rounds of this federal punch ammunition I think in today's test it backs up the test that I also did about six months ago the federal came out on top again this is good ammunition and again it's what I will have in my revolver whenever I'm carrying that revolver whether I'm carrying it as a primary or a backup so that's about all I've got today I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found it helpful always remember if anybody asks you to give up a little of your freedom for the greater good that freedom is the greater good and I'll talk to y'all again soon